Hello, my name is Brandon Weekly, and in this video we go over the secure firmware updates feature enabled by the CEC 17.3x platform root of trust controller. We cover how this feature works, the kind of security value it adds to your system, and how to provision it using the free Trust Platform Design Suite software available on our website. This does build on another video that we made about Secure Boot, which is also in this chip tutorials playlist, so we recommend watching that first. And take a look at the links in the description for more educational materials and how to download Trust Platform Design Suite so you can follow along. Once you've seen the Secure Boot video, some of this material will seem a bit familiar, but it's important to reestablish what threat vectors we're addressing so that we can understand how Secure Boot and Secure Update help protect us in the pre-boot environment before we get to our BIOS or our operating system. Now, from a system architecture perspective, typically we're dealing with an application processor and an external spy flash that stores the code that's used during the boot sequence. So at boot time, the application processor turns on and calls the code from the external spy flash that it then begins executing. Now what we're trying to prevent is a malicious actor coming in and hijacking this data bus in some way or another. This can be an in-person attack, this can be done remotely, but what we want to do is make sure that the code that we're executing on the application processor is, is vetted and signed so that we understand that it comes from a trustworthy source before we allow it to actually run. So again, we do that by placing a CEC 17.3x in between the application processor and the external spy flash. We have a spy bus that goes from that flash into the trust shield. We have an I squared C line that goes from the trust shield to the AP. We have a reset line, which as we saw in the secure boot video is held during the boot process so that we can vet our code, establish our signatures before we allow it to actually run. And then we have a spy bus that goes from the trust shield to the AP so that once, we're, once we've vetted our code, we allow it to go straight from the spy flash to the processor. Now, here are the same blocks from the secure boot video. We have our AP images that are in our external spy flash that are trying to vet, again, in this example, we'll say it's the system BIOS code. We have our internal SRAM for the CEC, the ROM, the boot ROM, the one-time programmable block, and then the internal uh, flash memory inside of the CEC itself. Now, the difference here between secure boot and secure updates is we're trying to load in an entirely new set of code, a new system BIOS, or an update to the existing BIOS, and it's uh, the corresponding images that are used to vet that code. So what we do is we load in an updated image into the external spy flash, but leave in uh, one of the old images in there so that we can fall back onto it as a golden image if for whatever reason the update doesn't work. So we reboot the system, we load this updated image into the SRAM of the CEC, and then it basically runs the same steps that the secure boot does. So if we're able to verify the digital signature that we get from this updated code image, we'll then go ahead and load that update into the application processor and just start executing. We can then store that verified update back onto the spy flash and get rid of the old one if we, if, if we choose. But again, if for whatever reason, this uh, we are unable to successfully establish an accepted digital signature, we'll simply fall back on the old code and then we can go back and try to figure out what happened during the update. So even if this update doesn't work, your system will still operate on the old code. As a reminder, here's the list of things that you'll need to follow along with the demo and ultimately provision your own CEC 1736 package for secure updates. We'll need a laptop or a PC that's running either Windows or a Linux operating system. You'll need the CEC 1736 development board, which comes fitted with a socket that allows you to swap out CEC 1736 chips. This will be necessary because several of the features use the OTP or one-time programmable block, which, as the name suggests, can only be programmed to once. So if you burn some OTP settings, you can sw simply swap out the chip and try out a different configuration. You'll also need the Trust Platform Design Suite software, which is the UI that we'll be using for the configurator. And then you'll also need some of the dependencies in MPLAB. So you'll want to have MPLABX integrated development environment as installed as well. Once you're in Trust Platform Design Suite, your screen should look like this. And we'll want to start by navigating from the Home tab over to this Configurators tab. 
We'll come down and click on the CEC 173X Trust Flex Configurator. And then you should get a screen that looks like this. We'll want to click on this System Configuration option in the top left. And here we'll scroll down to the use cases that are enabled by the CEC 173X. We want to make sure that Secure Update is checked. Once it is, you'll see it appear here in the left, so we'll click on Secure Update. And this is where you will configure Secure Update to the needs of your system. So there are a couple of sections of features that we want to configure. We'll start with the PLDM firmware device settings. And this is where you will decide what to do in the event of a failed update, how many flash components your system is going to use. You can use one or two. And you decide on your device descriptors. Next in the secure update packages is just the one option. Uh, you decide whether to enable components updates using PLDM. Then this last section for stage and restore base addresses is where you're going to designate where the updates are going to be stored and then where the golden images are going to be stored in the event of a failed update. Now, if you want more information on the technical side as to what is going on here, we do have a transaction diagram that shows what is happening between each of the parties in question during a secure update. You can see all the details here in the diagram. But again, we have our application owner, we have our application processor, the boot ROM that's inside of the CEC 173X, the EC firmware or Soteria G3, which is the proprietary firmware that, that uh, allows you to provision these use cases using the CEC device. We have the one-time programmable block in the CEC device, its internal flash, and then the external flash where you store your boot code images. Thank you for watching this video in our Chiptorial series covering the secure updates feature of the CEC 173X Platform Root of Trust controller. Check the description to learn more about this part, and check out the other videos in our Chiptorial series to learn more about the different use cases enabled by our Trust Platform Design Suite software. But most importantly, download Trust Platform Design Suite today to get started adding security to your platform.